morning all. It's here. <laughs> oh, I'm buzzing. Uh, so if you haven't seen the time lapse already, there is a time lapse of the full build. So I'm not going to try and repeat the full build in this video. Yeah, this is just a quick, well, a quick overview of the polycrub. So it's measuring in at 12 meters by three and it's approximately 9 a.m. Saturday morning. So there has been just like a light sort of skiffle of like fog. So that's not condensation. I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up or not, but that's just kind of water droplets on the outside. And yes, a few people have asked me, what's a polycrub? Like, why am I saying polycrub versus polytunnel? Technically, yes, it's the same shape as a polytunnel, but instead of conventional polythene that my original tunnel's done in, this is hard shell 6 mil polycarbonate. So this was um, KSB Greenhouses. It very kindly came up uh, yesterday. A great team of lads installed installed the full thing. Uh, now there was some prep work done on site by ourselves first of all. So this was already quite level anyhow. So there wasn't really much to do there. But there was just kind of a lot of like raised earth here that I was going to use as um, a vegetable bed. So that all got stripped away sort of leveled off thank you to our digger driver who very kindly did that there has been some just sort of crush and run put down as well um not too deep so it's only it's only about a centimeter deep or so but just to sort of give like a nice base layer and then yes the guys as i said came up from county longford and they had the frame and the polycarbonate and, and everything with them. They drilled the holes and all the beams, I'll show you inside shortly, all the beams are all concreted in. And there's a door on each end and I'll show you the doors very soon as well. Yeah, basically this is like a lifetime job. So um, I have a greenhouse already. I'm very lucky. I have a greenhouse now. Um, I have a lean-to greenhouse. I have my original polytunnel. And don't get me wrong, I love my original tunnel. That's great. And now we have the polycrub. So I'm kind of foresighting that my original polytunnel probably might have a lifespan of another five years approx or so we'll see we'll see what happens before it needs recovered again the advantage of the crub is you're never having to do that plus all these these are all individual sheets that are all slotted together so it's not like it's one big cover that goes across they come in their segments and they all interconnect so it's it's brilliant and even around the doors there's a wee bit of like i think it's like rubber or just kind of like a, a draft control of some sort that just goes around the periphery of the door. The doors open in two halves, like a stable door as well. So, you know, if I don't want to open the full door, I can open just the top half. And that's going to be really good in like, you know, months of March, April, or maybe it's a cool enough day, but it's warm enough midday, but you don't want to open the whole door. So, you know, you can get good airflow in for the seedlings, then you can close it again at night, and then you can open the full door. And it also comes, both doors come with a wee catch as well, which I'll show you here shortly. Um, which holds the whole door open so there's no like running around for a prop or making sure you have a watering can full or something to prop the door open the door swings right around on itself interconnects in fantastic so yeah can't fault it i'll show you inside now okay so this is probably the door i'm going to use the most and these are the two sort of doors i was saying to you about so you have obviously just your full door option if you need it and the half door so i'll start with the half door so um, obviously just turn your handle like so swing it round and then sorry there's the catch there and the lever so I swing it round and catch it so that's it fully caught there's a great wee sort of tongue and groove system so that's not that's not going to move that's that's completely there for the rest of the day now this is great obviously as i was saying there for seedlings you know if april march or sorry march april or if it's october september you know where it's cooler and warmer sort of at the same time and you're, you're not knowing where you're going and then if you if you want to open the full door you still have to open the two doors together obviously but there's not kind of a one lever does all so you still open the top as one door and the bottom one separately so open and then we walk in Side the tunnel absolutely 
no moisture in here. So as I was saying earlier, there was like a skiffle of water on the outside of the shell. That's all on the outside. If I run my hand over this, no moisture. Just cold to touch, obviously, but there's no, there's no condensation. And that's because obviously it's sealed. Now, as you can see, still have the gravel floor in. Didn't get the floor completed yesterday. And already, as you can see, I've brought plants in, but that's because of this heavy snow that's coming next week. So none of these plants are extremely tender, but they are things like strawberries, uh, dianthus, verbena binariensis, things that I just didn't think maybe would tackle the snow too well next week. These had been outside and have been overwintering fine on their own outdoors. There's also eight trays here of dahlias, and I had kind of like a wee makeshift tunnel thing that was sitting here that was just doing as a trial, which didn't work out, which you might have seen in my TikTok, the whole thing just blew over in Storm Pia. Um, but it, it, it's okay, We, you know, I sort of had estimated that it, was, it wasn't going to do so well. Uh, I don't think these dahlias actually are alive, like I think they're dead. I know this isn't the proper way to overwinter dahlias. I'm only doing them as a trial. If they do come through, they do come through. Like I know piles of people are going to write in the comments, this isn't how you overwinter a dahlia. Look, I've, I've wrote them off as dead. If any of them push through, it's a success. If they don't, it's all right. I'll just, I'll compost the lot. But yeah, you can see now the, the full stretch of what I have. On the far end, uh, there's a diesel heater, which is fantastic. Now I have a diesel heater over on my other tunnel and it, it, it's fantastic. It's the same, it's the same model of heater. They're very good. The problem with my other tunnel is it's just, you know, there's just, gaps around the door frame and stuff um, where the air is getting in and out and you know you can do your best to protect it but there's always going to be heat loss somewhere where as I've mentioned obviously this one is sealed so there's no kind of risk of heat loss and then sorry I'm rambling a wee bit here but back to the floor then I'm going to repeat the same floor as I have in my original tunnel so get this gravel kind of like leveled off a wee bit and then do it all in landscape fabric now I know a lot of people you know are going to be like why don't you plant into the ground why don't you maybe scrape some of this gravel off and put nice compost in and, and, and use it as a sort of planting space I, I might do that i'm not ruling that out i might do it on one side i'm not sure yet i i've i've thought about that It'd be very good for tomatoes and stuff at the minute the reason why i like to go with a fabric floor is it's easy to sweep it's good to store plants um it just keeps it all nice and clean i'm not actively doing food production as much as i'm growing plants and stuff Herbaceous perennials is kind of more my niche, that's kind of what I'm better at currently. But the flexibility in the future is, you can always lift the fabric up again if you choose to plant into the into the floors. This gravel's not this deep, as I've mentioned, it's, it's just about a centimetre, so there is lovely soil in underneath that. And, um, you know, what I would do is I would just mix all that gravel and the soil through and, you know, add a bit of compost and then you could plant straight into it. So it's never wasted if I change my mind. But yes, really pleased, really pleased. Um, as you can see as well, there's loads of these skeleton sort of frames around. So it gives you lots of cool places as well to hang stuff from, you know, hanging baskets. They all have like a wee vent, if you know what I mean. So you can actually use a hooked item on this. So they all come with like, a, well, I suppose it's called a V groove um, where you can hang stuff from. And then along the walls as well, you know, you can put beams across. I might just get a couple of scaffolding beams and set them along here. And then, all you know, you can have all your seed trays sitting there and it's at a really nice height. Plus, it still gives you lots of floor space. You can set stuff underneath. Um, might look about putting irrigation in here as well. Who knows? I don't know. But the luxury is, again, I have a door at each end. This site's quite elevated. So, you know, the wind will come through nicely in the summer. And um, as well, the... the the polycarbonate itself is fluted, so it's not completely transparent. So even when it is completely clear, I actually can't see out of it. Like I, I can barely, I can really just make out the roof line of the house. That's really all I can see through this. Like that's how, it's not opaque and it's not transparent. So it just has this nice fluted light, which is great for bringing on seedlings in. And this is why I might prefer this one for my seedlings over my original tunnel, which I might now keep for food production and stuff. And all my tomatoes and stuff will still be done over there and keep this for seedlings. Because the thing with seedlings is if you have too strong a light, it can scorch them too young. And this will have a nice ambient temperature through the day. And I'm sort of thinking kind of May time when you'll have the doors open and you don't need bottom heat and you don't need propagators and stuff so there will be just a nice lovely ambient temperature in here and that will be with the doors open so i'm thinking because you would have that 
you'd have this kind of fluted effect that would kind of reduce the amount of evaporation as well fractionally out of your plants because that's another thing with seedlings and seed trays is you can lose moisture quite quickly so yeah really pleased really pleased if you want to see the time lapse of the build just scroll back a wee bit um, it was a couple of days ago and yeah if you have any questions about the polycrub what i'm going to do there'll be more updates to come on this anyway stay tuned and thank you for watching and i say i can't as well recommend the team um from ksb enough those those guys were just phenomenal um they were here at like 7 30 in the morning they had this whole thing up concreted and leveled measured to perfection and i think away by like two o'clock or half two or something it was it was crazy such an efficient team just knew what they were doing so good at their job like wow like <laughs> i swear I've, I've never seen a group of guys that were just like whizzing all over the place as quick in my life they just knew exactly where they had to be what they had to do and it was it was it was flawless i have to say it it's the most efficient thing I've ever seen built. So, wow, credit to them. So, thank you guys. Bye.